this is the first video for topic 4 software um, from the new IGCSE computer science syllabus 2023 to 2025 we're going to be looking at the differences between system software and application software we're going to be able to describe the difference between system software and application software and provide examples of each before we begin we need to mention that all computers start life as a group of connected hardware items and we look at this in topic 3 but without software the hardware items would realistically be useless let's try and break down what we're talking about so installing your computer depending on whether you have chosen a Mac or a PC will be an operating system maybe iOS or Windows the operating system also includes utility programs and hardware drivers on top of the operating system application software can be installed such as spreadsheets and word processing applications and these would all be used by the person operating the computer so let's break this down software can be split into two categories system software and application software the system software would be the operating system which encompasses utility programs and device drivers and application software which needs to be installed on top of an operating system would include things like spreadsheets word processors databases internet browsers and game software now what we do find is quite a few of these spreadsheets word process databases are now online and are installed within a web browser so if we break down system software um, the general features of system software is a set of programs to control and manage the operation of the computer hardware it provides a platform on which other software can run it is required to allow hardware and software to run without problems it provides what they call a human computer interface or an HCI and controls the allocation and usage of hardware resources on the other hand application software um, the general features include um, it is used to perform various applications apps on the computer um, it allows users to perform specific tasks using the computer's resources it may be a single program for example notepad or it could be a suite of programs for example Microsoft Office um, the user can execute the software as and when they require basically if they open and close the software so the first example word processor this we've got quite a few examples here including Word LibreOffice um, Google of course Google Docs um, pages so word processor software is used to manipulate a text document such as an essay or a report you'll all have used word processors text is entered using a keyboard and the software provides tools for copying deleting and and various types of formatting some of the functions of word processors um, would include creating editing saving and manipulating text copying and pasting functions spell checking and thesaurus importing photographs and images into a structured page format and even translating into a foreign language we move on to spreadsheet software um, this is all about using um, using numbers and doing calculations so spreadsheet software is used to organize and manipulate numerical data um, in the form of integers real date and so on numbers are organized on a grid as you can see up here of lettered columns and numbered rows the grid itself is made up of cells and each cell is identified using a unique combination of columns and rows for example B six would be down here some of the functions of the spreadsheet include use of formulas to carry out calculations ability to produce graphs and the ability to do modeling and what if calculations move on to database software um, which may not be familiar to, to a lot of people but database software is used to organize manipulate and analyze data usually large amounts of data a typical database is made up of one or more tables as you can see here tables consist of rows and columns a little bit like a spreadsheet each row is called a record okay and each column is called a field this provides a basic structure for the organization of data within a database um, some of the functions would include the ability to carry out queries on database data and produce a report add delete and modify data in a table is also possible other examples of application software could include apps um, got lots and lots of apps on our mobile phones um, they normally refer to software which runs on mobile phones or tablets they are normally downloaded from an app store 
can range from games to sophisticated software such as phone banking. Common examples of apps include video and music streaming, GPS, global positioning systems um, to help you find your chosen location, camera facilities for taking photographs and storing, manipulating and image taking. We then move on to video editing software, which gives us the ability to manipulate video to produce a new video. Um, lots of these are used nowadays with um, social media sites such as TikTok and Instagram. And finally, control and measuring software. Um, this is designed to allow computers or microprocessors to interface with sensors so that it's possible to measure physical qualities in the real world such as temperatures. Um, to control applications such as chemical processes by comparing sensor data and store it and by comparing sensor data and stored data and sending out signals to alter process parameters. Um, even things such as burglar alarms will use some kind of a monitoring and measuring software, maybe within a, micro, a microcontroller. Examples of typical system software. Well, we'll start with the operating system. Now, the operating system, or OS, is essentially software running in the background of a computer system. It's usually the first thing that's installed on a computer. It manages many of the basic functions. Without the, without the operating system, most computers would be very user unfriendly, and the majority of users would find it almost impossible to work with computers on a day-to-day -day basis. What does an operating system allow us to do? It controls the input and output operations. The, the device is connected to our computer. It allows the user to communicate with the computer. Error handling to take place and the loading and running of programs to occur and managing um, security, uh, user accounts and logging on with passwords. Utility software, these include everything from antivirus, anti-spyware, backing up files, defragging our computers, screensaver security and lots of other things. Got some examples down here. If you are running iOS and if you click down here and we click on the little um, system preferences we can access lots of this functionality. Um, virus checkers, this is important. Um, antivirus is a kind of software used to prevent, scan, detect and delete viruses from a computer. Once installed, most antivirus software runs automatically in the background to provide real-time protection against virus attacks. Uh, comprehensive virus protection programs help protect your files and hardware from malware such as worms, such as Trojan horses and spyware and may also offer additional protections such as customizable firewalls and website blocking. They're able to check software or files before they run or load it onto your computer. They compare a possible virus against a database of known viruses. You may not be familiar with this, this is defragmentation software. And what this basically does, it, it really is for the older HDD hard disks where information is stored on, on, a, on a sort of metal disk um, and basically all it's used for is, is to sort clusters. So it, put, it would put all of these files, all of this information in order. So it would group things together and this would make the, um, the hard disk uh, more efficient and run quickly. It's not jumping around to try and find information because it's scattered around the disk. It would group um, like information together. And finally, backup software. An example of this uh, might be Time Machine if you have a MacBook and it's basically used to back up your files. Obviously now um, a lot of this uh, has been replaced with cloud technology so we don't need to plug in a hard disk or an SSD anymore or an external drive. We can simply copy and uh, move our files to the cloud to make sure our information is backed up and can be retrievable if anything, if, if anything should happen to our computer. So, I'm going to talk about security software in a little bit more detail because what does this do? Well, it links into other utility software such as virus checking and spyware checking. It protects the network interfaces. For example, it uses firewalls. It manages access controls and user accounts with user IDs and passwords. It oversees uh, the updating of software. Is the update uh, legitimate? Um, is it from the actual um, authors of the software? It also looks after user encryption and decryption to ensure any incepted data is meaningless without a decryption key. It's basically protecting the information that you're sending across the network and what you're receiving back. If I mention screensavers, basically back in the day 
talk about old um, cathode ray tube monitors these could suffer some, from something called um, phosphor burn basically if um, an image remains still on the monitor for a long period of time it could cause problems it could cause like a shadowing effect to appear but with modern LCD and OLED screens this problem is no longer existing however many screen savers are also used as part of the computer security system if a computer is unused for five minutes and hasn't been logged out this would trigger a screen saver to run the computer user will then um, automatically be logged out and they would have to sort of wiggle the mouse and type in their password to get back onto their um, computer and their information other examples and I'm not going to go into too much detail about this we've got other examples of system software which would include compilers linkers and device drivers device drivers are important obviously because everything that we connect to our computer be it hardware or software needs to have needs to be recognized by the operating system so all these devices be it a printer be it a digital camera or your mobile phone will come with some kind of driver that links to the operating system and allows it to be understood by the operating system in order for it to work now compilers a compiler is a computer program that translates a program written in a high level language into machine code so it can be understood by the computer for those of you who do coding um, obviously coding is done in something like python or visual basic which is known as a high level language in order for the computer to run and understand this it would need converting into a low level language or even machine code a linker or a link editor is a computer program that takes one or more object files produced by a compiler and combines them into a single program that can run on our computer for example many programming languages allow programmers to write different pieces of code so if many many people are writing pieces of code for a specific job then it, the, the linker allows it all to be linked together that is it for this video um, thank you very much indeed for watching please continue to ask questions leave your comments hit notifications and please subscribe and finally if you wish to buy me a coffee i'd be truly grateful please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone thank you very much indeed see you next time bye for now